Hello, good morning, and welcome back to the fish locker out in the Florida Keys. As you can see, the sun is just coming up. Look at that, that's a big ring cloud. The sun is just coming up. It doesn't matter where I am, it's still my favourite time of day. The tide at the moment is coursing through this way, so right to left. Very soon it's going to turn around and go back. That's when I want to be fishing down in here. I wrecked this out the last time I was in Florida. In fact, if you can see him, there's a big parrotfish just come past. Yeah, the areas that I'm going, the areas that I'm going to be fishing today, I'm going to be fishing into this slack eddy here, and I'll be trotting a couple of baits. That is a really big parrotfish. Don't know if you can see him there. It's like an aquarium. <laughs> I'm going to be fishing baits out and about around there when the tide drops off to now. And I'm going to be fishing them down this way when it turns. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to put the camera down now and I'm going to get my rods out because there's just fish everywhere. I'm going to be fishing um, light two hook scratching rigs to start off with to see if I can't catch a live bait. And I'll be putting a live bait out. Just really simple. I'll talk you through it as I do it. Just wish me luck. Don't know if you can see them. You see all them parrot fish there? The first rod that I've got out, I caught a little crab by hand. So I've stuck a little crab out at distance, just on a, a 2 or circle hook. And my scratching rig is just a very simple 2 hook scratching rig with size 12 hooks and little tiny scraps of squid. Now, the tide's not strong here in this eddy, so I've only got an ounce lead. That was literally the second that it hit the bottom. That's a little spiky little mangrove snapper. And he splashed the lens, of course he has. First drop, first fish, of course it's going to splash the lens. You need to be careful with these because they have got some fangs on them. Just inside of the, ooh, you see how it chomps? Yeah, they've got a set of fangs in there and they're covered in spikes. Just like a Rassies back in the UK. Yeah, that was that was literally boom bottom fish on. <laughs> Gonna have to be faster than that, John. Yeah, one of the things, if I was going to be coming back here, or if I was, if there was anybody going to be coming here, and I was to give them any advice on what to bring, I brought a little rod tube. They're just the same rods that I use for inshore in the UK. But one of the things that I wish that I could have brought, which that I did have and I just don't have the space and I don't want to have to buy one for like a couple of hundred dollars and then leave it here, is it like an icy tech or like a Yeti or something like a freezer box? Because your frozen bait here it doesn't stay frozen for more than about 15 minutes. And that looks like a little French grunt. I'm gonna to say Tom Tate snapper. If I make any mistakes, or if I don't know the species, what I'll do is when I get home, I'll research and I'll put it in as an annotation. Sergeant Major fish. They are stunning, aren't they? We've only got tiny mouths, so they've been absolutely shredding me. Now, I have managed to catch two live baits. Drop in there for a second. They've managed to catch two live baits, so I've sent one out. But, <laughs> these Sergeant Major fish are just that ravenous that I just can't keep a bait down there. I'm gonna fish on for another couple of minutes, see if I can't get one more, and I'm gonna put some bigger baits out at distance and hopefully manage to pick something else up. Because all tight and sure, right underneath my feet. Them big parrotfish do keep coming past, but I can't get a bait to them because the damselfish are just smashing it. Oh, there's a noisy cicada. And that one, I believe, is a little tiny lane snapper.
Got a good sized mouth on him for oh. <laughs> Got a good sized mouth on him for such a little fish. One more little live, eh? I'll switch over to the bigger bit. I was hoping that tide would have turned by now. The tide round here, it does, it, it moves, not only is it strange, because there's only two feet of movement between high tide and low tide. Whereas like in areas of the UK, there's 10 metres. The, um, in Cornwall, where I usually fish, like five metres of movement. But um, you go two mile, and it can be going one way underneath the bridge, and you go two mile further back, and it can be another mile, other way up. Just um, two in a row. <laughs> That is a Mohara, perfect live bait. Perfect size, perfect fish. It's only taken me about 25 damselfish to find it though. I don't know if these are two different types of damselfish. But one here that's got an awful lot of yellow in it. One there that's really dark looking. I don't know if there's two different types or just colour variation. Yeah, I'm not sure if there's two different types or if it's just a different variation of colour, which one was bigger than the other. I didn't get time to turn the camera on for that. No, I didn't get time to turn the camera on for that. But that little crab that I sent out on that circle hook. Now, I don't want to say the wrong name of snapper, but this is this is a snapper. You can see her by the amount of snapping at me. Right, you're gonna to have to calm down. They just do like a proper like a dog snap. And the teeth that they've got in there. You can see the teeth this time. I'm gonna have my fingers if I'm not careful. Beautiful looking fish. I've got circle hooks just turned straight out. Right, I'm going to put him in there, I'm going to take a photo of him. But yeah, that was all it was. A little crab on a circle hook. That's the second time I've missed a fantastic fish over there. Just got a chunk of squid out on that circle hook. What I caught that, I caught that snapper on that crab earlier. First one, <laughs> lifted into it, had it on for about maybe 10 seconds and it slipped the hook. Now, I don't know whether or not I just didn't set the hook right, but it could have been a parrot fish, as in like it's got a real hard mouth. But that one there, was pecking at it and pecking at it and just lifted it and brought it to it. Try and replicate that again, but yeah, that's a bigger fish now. That was a cracking bite. I can't believe that didn't <laughs> that didn't connect. It was zipping off, and as soon as I set into it, it just was gone. We just seem to have had like a stack of these moving. These little lane snapper. And they're just absolutely destroying the bait. In fact, I've probably only got enough baits left for another half an hour. <laughs> so yeah, today might be a cut short. It's um, just frustrating uh, getting like really good like screaming bites. So it's running line off the off the live liner, off the bait runner. As soon as I lift into it, it's just not there. Something, something not quite right with my rigs. I'll have to have a think about it. I don't 100% know what this is. Now to me, to my untrained eye, it just looks like a massive Mohara. Circle hook. None of these fish like holding still. Now that is a beautiful looking fish. 
Now that is a stunning looking fish. But like I say, I have no idea what it is. It does just look like a massive Mahara. The, the little live bait that I've been catching, it just looks like a massive one of them. But I don't know. A little Sergeant Major fish. One thing that I have learnt about fishing around here is it's incredibly snaggy and a lot of it's line snags. So I've lost quite a lot of rigs which is um, down to the lead getting stuck or the hook getting stuck. Just, yeah. Don't know until you fish it do you? There we go, I've managed to turn my last little tiny scrap of bait into another little mangrove snapper. I, go, um, I must have had, again, 15, 15 of these. A load of grunts, a load of little snappers. <laughs> I've definitely got unfinished business with this man. Lost too many good fish. Too many like screaming drag fish. Just uh, yeah. Regroup, reassess. Definitely got unfinished business with this mark. It turns out that, uh, that the advice I was given by the tackle shop about the tides was 100% wrong. So I got down here about 20 minutes after the tide had turned, so I fished almost the full of <laughs> full of the wrong tide. But what you can what can you do with? Now I know. I think I've been mugged off. <laughs> I was thinking to myself, well, why would that bloke in the tackle shop tell me the complete wrong time to be here? I mean, it wasn't as if it was like a little bit out, it was absolutely out. And then when I looked around, I just thought, well, one, two, three, four, five, six, and there's another boat just up the corner there. There's literally like half a dozen boats have anchored up right where I am now, just as I'm leaving. So they obviously know somewhere that I didn't. And the guy at the tackle shop didn't want me here because he wanted to be here. <laughs> so yeah, slack water under the bridges. That seems to be the key. We are fishing with little live baits, so I was, I had that part right. Right, I've come back down to Vaca Cut. This is the place where I fished the other day, but the tide was completely wrong. The tide is almost about to turn. I know that because I've been here. <laughs> you see, it's just slacking off. I'm just looking around and collecting loads of like old bits of fishing line out of them. I was just watching a set of lobsters. And this is one thing that I've noticed everywhere in Florida is they all have big bins where there's any fishing areas. I mean, yeah, true to be honest. It's not been cleaned in any, any time recently, but they all provide bins. All the way along all the bridges, all the way along all the shore mats, there are always bins for people to put the rubbish. Maybe something we could learn from that in the UK. That lobster there. You almost grab it, couldn't you? Right. <laughs> I've just got myself set up. I've come back to that vaca cut. I fished through the day but in the wrong tide and now I know it's the right tide because I've worked out. I've just got myself a live bait, the tide's just about to drop off to slack and I'm hoping to fish a live bait around them pilings there in the hope of a grouper. I'm going to fish other little baits as well like squid baits when the tide starts to run that way. But in the meantime I'm going to catch a couple more little grunts. I've got one little grunt just sat out there as a live bait. See if I can't grab a couple more. Just exactly the same rigs and everything that I was using on the previous session now with a different tide yeah the uh, it's a sweaty one today perfect perfect live bird
There we are. Double hit. That looks like a rainbow wrasse. Yeah, rainbow wrasse and a little French grunt. Now that is a lovely little live bait. Now these are something else, slippery wise. They're just an absolute nuisance. I'm switching my hook lengths over because the tide's starting to run now. I'm switching my hook lengths over to something slightly longer. Now, I didn't bring much tackle with me. It's just a few bits and pieces. I'll make them all up and put them in sandwich bags. And I have a little collection of legs. Just really simple gear. But with a bit of organisation, it does the trick, doesn't it? Oh, I'm happy about this one. I've just, just literally switched over to a longer hook length because the tide's running a little bit harder. And it's picked me up a lovely mutton snapper. Now they really are a pretty fish. I think this one's still below the minimum landing size, but they are stunning look. Oh, he's gorgeous. I'm gonna get a photo of him. Now you, need to, you still need to be careful though because they have got they have got good gnashes. But yeah. Hopefully that's a sign that the fish are coming on the feed. The tide's picking up. Now that. I know them as being a Mohara and they are great bait so this guy I'm going to keep this guy for cut bait I don't know if you can see them but with that many bait fish around you would think there's got to be something bigger kicking about wouldn't you all that is a big cloud of like little tiny almost like anchovies on this one i've caught an angry little mangrove snapper that's it just as the tide's picked up and it started running that way and i've switched to these longer hook lengths i think so that the bait is let go they've got a hell of a jaws on them they just hang on i'll let you keep that one I think that longer hook length is just allowing the baits to flutter in the tide a little bit. The tide's it's properly coursing past now then. If I don't if I don't cast anywhere but down tide, no matter what leads I'm using, it just trots them along. Yeah, it's done me. I'm gonna call it. I'm just too, <laughs> just too dehydrated and sweaty. I have, uh, I have missed a couple of fish. My own fault, really. I wasn't really paying attention. I was doing something else like baiting up or moving a rod or. So yeah, there are fish here. Just millions and millions of line snags. I've pulled in like three mats, great big mats of line with all the old hooks in. And I have actually. I've just hooked a little tiny spiny lobster. Got a real weird bite on it, just like a. Anyway, I struck into it and got it all the way in and got it to the side of there and it flapped, it flapped off. So I, <laughs> I switched the GoPro around and I tried to do a little bit of underwater footage. Hopefully, if that's any good, I'll put it in here now. There's a good old mix of everything in there. Damsel fish, Sergeant Major fish, grunts, snappers, parrot fish. There's no wonder my little tiny baits don't last two seconds with all those about the place.
Oh, you see those antenna over there. That means only one thing. Too bad these guys are out of season. I might have snaffled him otherwise. I don't know if you can see it there, but there is a barracuda at the back. I hope you found the video interesting. I hope you enjoyed joining me. All the very best. See you later. Oh, weed fish. Oh, I've caught these before.